sharks. Few other animals on the planet inspire us with as much dread and wonder as these silent, gliding assassins of the deep. From Jaws to Shark Week, there's no doubt about it, people are obsessed with sharks. We just can't seem to get enough of them. Some even keep them as pets. But usually, if you see a shark in real life, you're spending a day at your local aquarium. In fact, some species do really well in captivity, like nurse sharks, leopard sharks, and even sand tigers. But the larger the shark, the harder it is to keep alive. Sure, aquariums have managed to care for bull sharks, tiger sharks, and even the mighty whale shark, but it turns out the biggest baby of them all might just be the infamous Great White. Keeping this colossal predator in cages is pretty much impossible, with nearly every attempt ending in total disaster. Only one aquarium in the world has ever managed it for more than a few days, and even that was only for six months before they were forced to release the shark back into the wild. So just what is it about Great Whites that makes them so hard to keep? Are they really that wimpy, or is there something more biological going on? How can such a feared predator be so incredibly sensitive? Stay tuned to the end of this video to find out. But before we begin, if you're enjoying the video, feel free to leave a like and chomp that subscribe button. You can ring the notification bell for a chance to be the first one to view new content from our channel. Now let's get this party started. One of the biggest problems in keeping great white sharks in captivity is that they're, well, big. The average weight of an adult is 15 to 2400 pounds, with males topping out around 11 to 13 feet long, while females of the species typically reach lengths of 15 to 21 feet. The largest shark on record was a breathtaking 37-foot female caught off the coast of New Brunswick. While this report is unconfirmed and scientists believe the measurements was taken with inaccurate methods, whatever that means, the largest confirmed shark was still pretty massive. And they can get that big because they spend such a long time growing. Actually, they never stop. Like many other shark species, great whites grow throughout their lives. Lives that biologists estimate can last up to 70 years or more. Heck, they don't even start to reproduce until they hit their 30s. Talk about waiting till the time is right, eh? Basically, what this means is that it takes a specifically shaped tank and at least a million gallons of water to even attempt success with a younger, smaller shark. Housing an older animal is practically impossible. They're just too big for tank life, but not in the way you'd expect. Now, I know what you're thinking. Great whites are smaller than whale sharks, and we've kept those in tanks for years. But, and this is a big but, only two aquariums in the entire world would have ever managed it and that's with millions upon millions of gallons worth of exhibit space. Even with all that, even with daily care and monitoring, they still had significantly shortened lifespans. The longest one lasted in captivity was 16 years, which sounds impressive until you realize that in the wild they can live to be over 100. So why is it that we can house the largest fish in the world for 16 years, but we can barely keep a great white for six months? To put it simply, whale sharks are lazy. These gentle giants glide through the water on long but easy twirling migrations. A tank is possible for them because with enough space, they can swim in their slow circles, casually feeding on plankton their keepers supply for them. Probably not the most enriching life ever, but hey, it's a life, right? By comparison, great whites are aggressive migrators. They travel along long, jagged paths that twist and turn and cross over one another sharply in the search of food. The ocean is 264.17 billion gallons of water spread out over about 60 million square miles of space. Great whites make thorough use of this unimaginably large area. By comparison, the largest tank in the world was built at the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta. It houses over 100,000 individual sea creatures, including their whale sharks. At 6.3 million gallons and 284 by 126 feet, with a maximum depth of 30 feet, it's big enough to park over a hundred of your average school buses side by side inside it. There's no denying the fact that it's a huge tank by exhibit standards, but it's tiny when you put it next to the actual ocean. Captivity is just way too stressful and confining for such an active predator. Even if you can get them to eat, they end up spending a lot of their time ramming the sides of their enclosure. They often develop rubs and then sores on their faces from bumping against the walls. When it comes down to it, there simply isn't enough room in even the largest tank to allow great whites to express their natural behaviors. If they don't refuse to eat straight off, they quickly succumb to mental instability. Imagine for a second that you put a goldfish and an Oscar in a 20-gallon tank. Their own 20-gallon tank, of course. Don't put those two fish together. 
probably won't go well. Anyway, the goldfish has the potential to grow huge in his own right, well and big enough to fill his environment. But as long as the water quality is good and he's got food, then he's fairly content to swim in slow, lazy loops around the tank. The Oscar can swim in there. He can still turn around, but it's not nearly enough room for such an active fish. Sure, it'll work out okay when he's younger, but the moment he's too big, that little guy will start to develop issues like hole and head disease. It's the same with young great whites. Of course, keeping a great white healthy in an aquarium is hard enough, but it's not the only or even the hardest part of keeping these powerful sharks in captivity. Just getting the shark from the ocean to the tank is a colossal challenge. You see, in order to breathe, fish need a constant flow of oxygen-rich water over their gills. Many fish and other sea creatures like eels accomplish this by simply opening and closing their mouths to sort of pump water through. They don't need to be moving to stay alive, but great whites, along with certain other sharks, can't do that. They have to move to breathe. If they stop, they die. That makes catching and transporting them while they're still alive a highly expensive and dangerous process. It requires a transport tank of enormous proportions. Between gas for what would pretty much have to be the equivalent of a Mack truck, the equipment to filter and fill the water that the shark was in with the oxygen, you're looking at thousands of dollars. Not to mention the fact that a great white starts to suffer from oxygen deprivation the moment it's caught in a net. Transporting such a large animal without restricting its movement is complicated at best. In most cases, the shark quickly loses oxygen, sinks to the bottom of transport, and either dies on the way or soon after arrival. People have even attempted holding the shark up with a harness and pumping it full of IV fluids laced with oxygen. It didn't matter. The shark still got sick, they still refused to eat, and they still died. Speaking of eating, let's talk about what it takes to feed such a massive beast. Because of course, even that has to be complicated when it comes to great whites. Sharks and snakes often fall under the same category when it comes to deadly predators people are afraid of, and their culinary development is just as similar. One might eat sea life and the other small land mammals, but hear me out. When they're young, snakes tend to eat different prey than they might as they get older. A reticulated python, for example, might start off eating mice or baby rats, but as they grow, they slowly transfer to other foods. A guinea pig, a rabbit, then piglets, maybe even lambs. It's the same with great whites. At birth, good old Jaws is only about four to five feet in length, somewhere around 50 pounds, and pretty much on their own right away. At this stage, they feed largely on fish, but as they grow older, they make the switch to foods that are dense in calories, all the way up to a blubber-rich, almost entirely mammal-based diet. In fact, once they're adults, they generally ignore other fish entirely though they are occasionally known to be cannibalistic. You'll probably find plenty of seals at an aquarium, maybe a walrus or two, but they're not there so they can be fed to the sharks. Without the proper food, it's extremely difficult, maybe even impossible for older great whites to get the calorie-fueled energy it takes to keep their systems running. To make matters worse, they're notorious for refusing food in captivity, but even if we could tempt them with a bit of tuna, it simply wouldn't provide what their bodies needed. It'd be like you trying to live on just celery for the rest of your life. It's just not enough. The sharks essentially starve to death, even though they're surrounded by food. Speaking of food and cannibalism, perhaps the final nail in the Great White's captivity coffin is their extreme levels of aggression. In 2004, after a well thought out, carefully calculated plan, the Monterey Bay Aquarium in Monterey, California captured a small, approximately year-old female white shark. First, they held her in a large net the circumference of what would become her new enclosure. When she readily took the food they provided, everyone cheered. Once they were sure she would eat, they brought in an enormous truck with a large tank on the back. In went the shark, and because she was so young, she still had room to swim and even turn around. After a nine-hour journey, she finally made it to her new home, and for 198 days, or just over six months, she swam in a specially designed enclosure. In that time, she grew a whole 14 inches and drew crowd after crowd of inquisitive visitors, bringing in plenty of revenue for the aquarium. She also attacked and killed two other sharks. Fearing for the safety of the animals in their care, including the great white, whose nose was now covered in open sores from repeatedly butting herself against the sides of the tank, the Monterey Bay Aquarium had no choice but to release her back into the wild. They made several more attempts over the years with varying lengths of success, and while none of their great white sharks ever died, every single one had to be released back into the wild due to various health concerns. In 2013, the Monterey Bay Aquarium haunted its great white program for good. Between limited success and pressure from the public due to the great white's endangered status, 
it simply wasn't worth it. So what do you think? Did you gain a better understanding of why we can't seem to keep a great white shark in captivity? With enough space and the proper food, do you think it could be done? Perhaps a more important question is, should it be done? If you enjoyed this video, then why not subscribe? Hit that bell icon as well so you're more likely to get notified of our noble answers to your burning questions. Also, if you have any questions you want answered, make sure to tell me in the comments section down below. And to keep filling your brain with regal knowledge, check out these videos here. They're magnificent.